Hey guys, welcome to another one of our videos. I'm the Worm, and this is the Proton. Uh, today we're going to be doing a review of a dripper that we were sent by Shell from our Facebook group. Um, yeah, so we did, we, we did receive this free charge, but nothing else. Not from a company. Um, indeed. Um, today what we're going to do is the DRA XL V2, which is a 22mm dripper. Um, you can get this from vaporfreak.de it costs 29 euros so it's it's not too bad it's on the kind of expensive side for this style of dripper I guess but not really at the same time um, so what's that in English it's about 22 quid there or thereabouts we'll get an exact number on around that about there you. but oh, you're looking at probably so. about 25, 6 ish for delivery as well sort of thing mm. so but it is a 22 mil dripper and there aren't many of those around. No, and if you've obviously got the NEM or the NEM clone, perfect. Indeed. Um, so yeah, that is it. Um, that's what we're reviewing today. What we're going to do, guys, we're going to go into a quick close-up for you, just to have a little, uh, a little looky-loo about what's going on there. Obviously, have to clean it all up and then come back up to us. You do a rewick as well, don't you? Rewick. Um, yes, I am. So we're going to do a rewick, show you about it, and then we'll come back up to us and have a nice lap. Right, guys. This is the. Uh, up close to the DR a XL V2. Um, the V1 was a, a different top cap assembly, blue screw on, um, but we'll get into that, I suppose. Um, just very quickly run you around it. You've got some sort of slatted steel along here, uh, and you've got a, a nice little Phoenix there, and your air hole just above the Phoenix. Um, one mil air hole, guys, from the guesstimations that we can sort of do by, by sight, but it is uh, it's a very tight draw. Um, as you come into the top of the top cap, you can see you've got quite a decent size, uh, I suppose 510 for your drip tip, but I think that's made in order to sort of help combat splash back. Um, and then on the base, obviously, you've got a standard sort of 510 connection, as you would expect. Um, Body is literally just two O rings on, nice big chamber. Um, obviously, being a 22mm mod, it's actually, it's actually a massive chamber. Um, as we move down into the actual dripper, O ring assembly, as I said, to get the uh, top cap on, and then you've got your internal assembly here. Uh, first things first though, that is an absolutely monumental drip well. I think Timmy fell down a similar one to that um, and uh, he was never seen again. Um, this is your negative post here, okay, and then that assembly here, there is your positive post. Um, now, it may look a bit strange and the fact that it moves is even stranger guys if you're not used to this. Um, I wasn't when I uh, received it for the post but basically the idea of this is is that you wrap your coil and you're meant to be able to sort of move it in order to change the resistance uh, a little bit skeptical as to how all that actually works I mean it does work but not to the point that I would say it sort of benefits you having it um, but that is what it is a couple of notes on this centre pose I know this is a lot glary guys but if you look at that how close that is to that negative that just screams to me um, well uh, accident waiting to happen to be honest with you um, especially when you consider this into your equation it's a it's a very moving mod, or oh, actually sorry. And then as we flip round with how moving it is, as you can see from this bottom, this 510. If I do this and just give it a little sort of wiggle about, that insulator does start to surface, um, which is very not good. So you then have to sort of push it back in, like I'm doing there, sort of get it out and then sort of move your insulator back down, um, in order to make sure that you're not contacting positive and negative of your 510, which are is obviously not good. Um, I've screwed this nut in the centre here down as much as I possibly can do uh, and it's it was, I mean to be honest with you guys, it was worse than that when we got it if, I don't know if you can be able to make it out, you can just, if you have a look underneath that positive bar there underneath there is uh, what we're kind of used to seeing in terms of insulator from RSSTs, that kind of thing at the top um, that kind of insulator in there and it has got a little bit of move unfortunately they didn't follow suit and put the same thing in the bottom which would have given it a bit more stability but that is what it is um, screw assembly at the top, two Phillips screws uh, and then obviously a couple of holes for your posts which are fairly nice um, I'm going to re this for you guys, there's not really a lot more info we can go into it about sort of on the up close, it's more just you having a little look at it um, the body is slightly tarnished to be honest with you um, Shell sent this down and uh, very grateful for her doing so I'm going to explain that now, I was at work and uh, demonstrating my karate moves and accidentally kung fu it across the workshop so sorry about that um, luckily she doesn't want it back so yeah one of their ones but uh, we are going to oh, so we, I'm going to wick it for you now I have literally no idea what I'm going to do to this um, all I do know is, is that I do not plan on that being movable so 
I know I've got a length of 28 gauge around here somewhere, that's a length of 28 gauge. Um, other than that, I've just got a wicking box here and I'm going to kind of go with what I feel. Um, so I think we're going to have some cotton in this. Why not? A bit, a bit of cotton. Um, oh, let's see what we're going to do. What we've been doing recently, guys, is sort of, sort of semi micro coiling. So, but as opposed to sort of your traditional micro coil being sort of 10, 12 wraps, we just do like five. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to do a sort of a semi normal coil. But what I am going to do is round the drill bit um, and then thread the cotton through just consistency. I mean, you can change the wick out really easy. So, I think what I'm going to do is just sort of, I don't know, five semi close wraps on a drill bit um, with the amount of space that you've got in this stripper. They haven't got to be super close if I'm honest with you um, and doing your wrap on the drill bit sorry guys I'm not off camera doing your wrap on the drill bit gives you a opportunity to tweak all of your cores before you actually place them which is always nice um, so at the minute that's what I've got hopefully you can make that up there you go that's what I've got there nothing uh, super special one of the main reasons I've chosen to do it this way though um, as well as the fact that you can obviously tweak your coils and everything else about it being changeable is that you can keep the drill bit in your coil and keep it rigid whilst we're fixing it to this because as you're fixing it things start to move and god knows what else so if I grab a little screwdriver and I'll loosen her up very briefly just to make sure that we can get it through them posts as always guys with this kind of setup um, one shorter than the other it makes your life slightly easier it doesn't have to be much shorter just a little bit uh, in order to allow you to get one in and then find the bed for the other one so one there well off camera sorry guys one there and one there and with this then we can just sort of be a bit rough with it and pull it in um, doing this setup so basically we've got our drill bit in we've got it up against the posts and we will bring it out slightly but I'm just starting to get these to bite so it's going to hold a little bit firm and then bring that away screw that one down and then this one's actually already sitting nicely away so we'll then screw that one down um, and we should just be able to hopefully remove our drill bit give it a little twist and a swivel and leave ourselves with a nice little coil um, from now I won't clip these just yet because there is something I do want to do with this before I go any further and that is take a minuscule piece of cotton and I'm going to bunch this as tight as I can pretty much get it uh, I know that this will go wrong because I'm going to be trying to do it on camera um, because I do have serious um, worries and sort of concerns about that there being close so I'm going to try and stick a bit of cotton in there just to make sure it stays separated it may be me being a bit sort of paranoid but better to be over cautious and not cautious enough if you ask me which is not something he usually practices he it normally just goes headstrong into anything and goes with the flow but I think he's doing the right thing on this more than being a little bit safe because it is, is risk it, of blowing his face up. To be honest with you guys, it is that I do have serious doubts as to that setup and the potential um, dangerousness that it, it holds. Uh, if I'm honest with you, I'm not I am I'm really not a fan of how they've decided to design this because I think it's a, a like I said an accident waiting to happen if I'm honest. Um, combined with the wrong mod, seeing as with an Arga, I mean if you see there that, that centre pin sort of in already so I'm now going to have to sort of try and push that down slightly to get it to pop back out and the insulators work so slightly free so now we're back on the level um, but with certain mods like uh, the Nemesis clone for example I don't know if it's going to do it with a proper Nemesis but as you screw down the bottom switch in Nemesis clone the battery starts to spin as it hits the dial ring that then screws in the top which forces that through lifting your positive bar completely nullifying your insulation and then you've got a short and um, that recently has cost me one of these um, which wasn't good brand new battery went because of that exact uh, situation I've just described um, so yeah it's not it's not the best start if I'm honest with you but hey ho it is what it is um, now we'll give these a clip a little clip there and now I always tuck them up at the back guys just like I've been practicing recently just to make sure that if something does go wrong I've got a little bit left to play with um, we're down the base as tight as we're going to go and from here, if I just press it down there, all we're going to do is make a simple cotton wick. Now this is cotton that's been, this organic cotton that's been boiled. Um, don't necessarily have to boil your cotton, to be honest with you. We haven't found much difference in flavour from doing that, but it's something that everyone seems to do, so I thought, why not? 
uh, and then all you're going to do literally is you want to make yourself a sort of uniform ish piece of cotton that is probably going to be too thin so we'll add to it that's the advantage of using cotton it's so versatile you can pretty much get away with anything with it um, just add some more give it a little twist and then you've got a thicker wick it's a it's an ideal uh, wicking material for honest and it's a very very clean uh, pure flavour uh, you want to give it a little bunch not too much just sort of to give yourself a wee sausage uh, and then what I tend to do is get one end and make it really tight it makes like sort of threading this a bit easier um, poke her through and just give her a pull and what you want with cotton is you want to be able to move her back and forth like that not too much resistance but then enough if that makes sense so that's kind of where we are with this um, now with the size of this well to be honest with you I'm not even going to bother trimming that cotton so what I'm going to do is literally grab my little flathead and tuck one bit down in now uh, do I want to go under? Do I want to go under here? Why not? We'll go under here and then one bit under there like so. Just tuck that in, give it a wee tuck um, and then that's kind of what we're left with there. It's it's not too bad. Uh, there's a little bit of a space in this you're going on there with that coil. Oh, hello. Just throwing that. So I will rectify that just now by giving her a wee tweak. Could have done this whilst it was on the drill bit to be honest with you. I made my life a bit easier but I'm famous for trying to make my own life difficult guys uh, and then there you go that is what we are left with so we'll prime this now what we're actually using is uh, some of uh, Mrs Lord's druid that Shell sent down with this dripper for us to try so it's going to be interesting I'm actually quite an intense vape with this uh, cotton setup this cotton is going to take quite a bit to prime um, in terms of drops I'm already at like 10 now uh, and I've not even fully primed it to be honest with you 11, 12, 13 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Your typical, I mean, we're at 18 now, I'd say we're primed. Your typical um, mill basically is meant to be sort of about 20 drops. What I would like to show you though quickly is basically once you've got your air hole and your call lined up, I'll sort of just sort of slop it over like that. They call this a dripper. Um, personally, I'll show you what I've been doing, and that is this. Just pour it in because that well is absolutely gargantuan. Um, you've just seen how much I've poured in, and now that I'm going to take this off now, it's going to spill everywhere just because I'm on video. But I'll do it because I like to live life on the edge. There you go. We're only just full with that amount of splurging. Um, so we're talking a good 25, 30 drops in this dripper. It's absolutely massive. I was saying to them earlier that I can vape this thing for 20 minutes, half an hour, and it's not even dry. So um, it's kind of good. It's like a small tank, to be fair. But that was a very quick uh, rewick and uppy closey of the um, the RAXL V2. We'll come back up to us now, guys, and we'll have a nice little flap. All right, guys, that was the uh, close up of Mr. Problem. I've done a rewick for you. Uh, we had a little search, and the price is a little bit more expensive than we thought it was. Twenty four pound eighty four at today's exchange rate. So we're going to call it around about thirty quid delivered from um, Vapor VaporFreak.de. Um, they've got quite a nice sort of stuff on that site. I mean, you've got the Euphoria, which is the Penelope clone. You've got the Hercules, which is the Ifaka clone. The Nautilus, which is the Oddy clone. Um, so, yeah, you've got some sort of higher-end clones on that site, as well as, obviously, this. And I think really well made ones. Some, some nice mods on there as well. So, um, go and check out Vapor Freak if you want to have a look into that stuff. But that price is obviously not set in stone. It is going to depend on the exchange rate at the time when you go through to PayPal, because they have their own exchange rate there. So, there you go. That is what it is. Um, as you've seen the close up, obviously we rewrite this with cotton, we're using some of the uh, druid that um, Shell sent down to us to have a little bait with. Quite nice stuff, we're going to do a review of that soon. Um, a couple of the things that we did point out in the close up, um, primarily the centre pin and the idea behind it. The idea behind it is that you're meant to be able to move that to adjust the, the ohms of your coil. Um, play around with it a little bit and found that there is a slight variation when you do play around with it. I mean, we're, we're talking slight, um, 0.1, 0.2 of an ohm at best. Not something that I would consider really worth doing, <laughs> to be honest with you. I mean, um, your coil will jump around 0.1, 0.2, and it's a fresh coil anyway. But let's be fair, guys, there's still the same amount of resistance wire in there. The resistance isn't going to change overly that much. No. It just isn't. No. I mean, unless there's some way of like maybe a like leave a little bit extra on, on the end and wrap it around the top, where so you can, if you're adjusting it back around the other way, you loosen it off, pull it out a bit, and that way you adjust your coil. But, but even then, you've got a bit of slack. You might as well re wick the bloody thing. <laughs> the effort it's going to take to do that. I mean, you're playing with like little bits of wire. You're going to need tweezers, you're going to be all arse and over, and it's going to be 
dripping in liquid, so it's not going to be easy. It's going to be slippery and everything. Slippery and everything. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a cliff note. We'll get into that no doubt after we do a five one here. That'll be part of the rant, I guess. Um, but I mean, a few of the, a few of the bits and bobs. Firstly, and primarily, straight away, this is a bloody tight draw. Um, I mean, it, it's it was what looks like about a one mil hole, but to be honest with you, it feels like a 0.5. It, it really is very tight for such a, a big chamber as well, because you have got a nice chamber. You've got a it's huge. A tank. You have got a, it's a dripping tank. It's not a dripping atomizer. You've got such a big well in there. Honestly, when I fill this thing. I mean, there are other drippers that are similar to this, but nowhere near as to the scale. But when I fill this thing, I don't drip. I put, I take the drip tip out, stick the, 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 the nozzle of the bottle in and squeeze. I just go, and squeeze probably about 20 drops in it. It takes it. It takes it all day long. I mean, it's a double eye ring first, so you can change your um, air hole location in conjunction with your coil, which is awesome stuff. Um, but it's just the amount of juice that thing holds. I was vaping it for like 45 minutes the other night. I mean, I've got to admit, had it had, or if it had a, a draw, an area draw, um, I think I would go for a juice slightly quicker. Um, but as it is, it's, it's, it's definitely quite intense on the flavour, um, but the draw is just, going from something like a Nova or something, then yes, I can, I can see how that draw would make sense to me. But then going from a Nova, that build is far too complicated. Um, I'm not a big fan of the draw, I'm not going to lie. That's that's my first and foremost. I want to change that about this. Uh, it's going to be drilled out. It will be drilled out. I mean, a 1.2, 1.3, something just slightly area. I'm not asking for something necessarily that you can do lung hits off of, but something that you could do a mouth pull off of comfortably. To do that, it feels like you've really got through a straw um, to get a decent hit. Um, unfortunately, you do get masses of flavour, but unfortunately, vapor does suffer slightly. But let's face it, it's about flavour really. So I can see where they're going with with that. Um, yeah, and unlike the version one, like we say, o ring, double O-ring fitting on top as opposed to your screw, um, which is good so you can line up no matter where you have that post, where you stack your coil, however you decide to build this thing, um, you're going to have a um, relevant air hole position. Um, the air hole is it's about midway up the body, but then it's in conjunction with where I suppose the positive and the negative leg are, which is where they're supposed to be. Woo! Um, so yeah, that is that. Building it feels fairly good, the actual build quality. I'm not a massive fan of this kind of slatted down the bottom. I'd rather have a, a, a knurled, I'm not a non line, I wouldn't rather have a knurled, I'd rather have a polished to match the body. I think that would look better, in my opinion anyway. Um, but looks, preference thing, simple as that. And you've got a nice little Phoenix logo on there, it's not over garish, it's kind of, it's nice to tell the very subtle. It's, it's, a, it's a subtle, it's a subtle logo, but it's on there for you if, if you like that kind of thing, I guess. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. Stainless steel construction, awesome stuff. Um, had no issues with 510 drip tips in this. Everything that I've tried has fitted in this without any hassle whatsoever. Even ones that are slightly tighter on certain areas have fitted straight in here. Um, and equally, ones that fit in everything all straight in. So, good stuff for that as well. Um, should we get onto a five point and then we'll, yeah. we'll do the other stuff? Looks. It's ugly. It just is. Sorry, it's not my preference in any way, shape, or form. It's just. Too much. What in size? Everything. I mean, I, I do like the diameter of it, but just the the rest of the build, like the post in it, it just all looks ugly. No matter what angle you put it at, it just is ugly. One it looks really. I do not like it. Subjective, guys. You can see it there. It's up to you what you think of it. Looks personally, I kind of like it. I, I'm, I like I say, I wish the the base matched. Um, but I'd imagine it's there for a purpose. It's gripping. Um, I'm gonna give it an eight. I don't. I don't dislike how it looks at all. I actually quite like it. Um, I like the fact it's a decent size for a change. Drippers tend to be small. I like the fact this is 22 mil. That that to me is this big. This thing for me is this thing's biggest selling point. Just purely because it's really get a dripper to match a decent size mod, and it's nice to find one. Um, so yeah, looks for me is an eight. Um, usability. It's n it's, it's not overly easy to use that. Positive post that wheels around and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's not overly hard. It's not the hardest thing we've come across, definitely. But again, it's not where you want to be starting off if you're looking into rebuildables and drippers and stuff like that. You can watch some of our other videos and they'll show you what we stayed to get start off on. Um, it's not overly hard. It's not overly easy. It's kind of like in that just above mid range because it's not overly hard to actually re wick. It's just that center post issue where it does fling around a bit got to be aware of it and ready to counteract it at any given notice. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, once you've got it all whipped up and that, you juice it up, stick it on an A, fire away. Stick on a mod. Oh yeah, stick on a mod. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> um, so usability is about seven. Um, usability in terms of wicking coil, it's not super difficult. Um, it's slightly more difficult than a fixed post setup purely because that positive does move around on you slightly when you're wicking, but it's not impossible to combat it at all. You done it on camera? Uh, yeah, fairly quickly. It wasn't particularly difficult um, with the method that I used. Um, so yeah, usability for wicking coil is about a nine. I was oh, saying eight, sorry, um, because you have got that complicated or complex setup. It's not just necessarily complicated, but it can be a bit of a hurdle. Um, but usability in general, um, one, low marks, big low marks, and the main reason being is I have serious, serious doubts as to how safe this is going to be if people aren't paying attention. Um, that post in the middle moving, it is on certain angles, it is incredibly close to that negative post. And I mean, sort of Nat's pube close. Okay, <laughs> sorry, but it is fucking close to that negative. And at points, it will touch on certain angles. Not paying attention, more more worried about your coil than you are about the, the base. Um, then yeah, you could be you could be in a bit of trouble. You effectively, you are completely shorting the battery. That is exactly what you're doing. Um, so usability, you've got to be very wary, and I am very, very wary. I, um, as soon as this review is finished, I plan on trying to design a better setup for that positive post. Give me a fixed post, lovely. But that, for me, is dangerous at times. Um, combine that with what I would call insufficient um, insulation in the 510, where it's just a small O-ring and on certain mods and that is when you do tighten it down and it's not like you require serious force the atty will still be wobbling about so you tend to keep going until it stops sort of wobbling and felt secure not tight but secure um, you've actually pushed that positive post up the o-ring has slipped over the positive connection and you have now got a naked pretty much um, positive connection inside that 510 and again that's touching a negative and you're effectively completely shorting the battery I've got serious, serious doubts as to why this has been designed like this and why it hasn't been changed. Because if there hasn't been an instant of serious, um, what word am I thinking of? Carnage. Repercussions. Serious, an instant with serious repercussions. I've got a feeling it's on the cards. I have. Um, I would like to point out at this point that this chi is capable of this. This this chi. Um, center pin from the bottom to adjust for the 510 I have to have it so it literally and I mean literally just touches because if I go any further it starts to push that post up and then the the, uh, the connection's gone and you're shorting um, so yeah I, I think it's actually pretty bloody uh, dangerous if I'm honest with you um, that combined with something like the uh, Nemesis clone not the real official Nem but the Nemesis clone I, I stuck this on originally because being 22mm or 22mm I thought lovely um, as I'm screwing down the Nemesis bottom cap, uh, the bottom button, sorry, in order to tighten up any excess, the, the battery was actually making contact with the contact itself and screwing it up again, forcing the positive up and causing an immediate short. Um, that actually cost me uh, one of my 18 amp uh, Sony straight away. Pushed it, bang, that was that battery dead. Um, so, yeah, I do have worries about this atomizer, if I'm honest with you, and it's the first one I've had that I, I am genuinely worried about. So yeah, usability is very low for me. Cool. Um, maintenance, which is where I was going to give my light mark, because maintaining this thing with the 510 uh, positive pin in the middle where it wiggles and it touches, which Mr. Pratt has already gone into, which is I was putting in maintenance instead of usability, because once you've got it set up, usability is nothing. Once it's on the actuality itself, That's what I'm saying, but you're okay. Maintaining it, God, with all the issues, like Mr. Pratt said, he's obviously put his into uh, usability, I'm putting mine into maintenance, because it is... I feel, I feel it's more part of maintenance, but these are personal preferences. This is why we do two of us. You get both sides of the scale. Um, I haven't used it at all, really. I haven't wicked it or anything, but I've seen what he's going on about. He's showed me everything before you re-wicked it and everything off camera. We discussed it for about half an hour, and um, yeah, maintenance of this thing is low because of that issues you've got with it just falling apart on you whenever you're trying to put it on a certain device. So, 
it's, one. It's not that it falls apart, but we're talking like a CE4 style O ring around a slightly smaller, in fact, slightly thinner, around the connection um, in the 510 or the 80. And I don't think realistically it's sufficient, not when you've got readily available things like your um, insulation for your centre post, your RSST, for example. Okay, if they slot one of them on and stuck it in the 510, it's a much more rigid form of insulation. It's a lot less likely to break, it's a lot less likely to wear, and there's no chance of it popping over. Um, that would have securely fixed, and again, that's the first thing I plan on doing with this device. It makes it more usable. The maintenance? Maintenance for me, see, I, th I think all that other stuff is usability, but again, that's that's our Personal take, take on it. Um, maintenance for me in general is sticking a coil in it and uh, and cleaning it. Uh, cleaning it's just washing it, um, although you have got more to worry about because if you lose that, then you've got no insulation whatsoever. Um, but cleaning it itself is easy, you run it under a tap. Unwicking it, Phillips screws, it's not too much of a deal, so you can pull them out. It's got posts in, it's got um, holes in the post to stick it through, so you're alright with that. Um, maintenance for coiling, hey, actually living with a coil, it's low, it's low, I'm not going to bother saying what it is because we know it's low. It's low, right, um, flavour and vapour for this thing, um, it's got an insufficient air hole, we've been into this, we don't really need to go into it too much, so the but amount our of taste insufficient air hole. Yeah, I um, mean, so the amount of vapour is going to suffer compared to other drippers out there, so it, it's not by any means it's low, not bad. it's just... It could be better. I mean, at the moment, it's probably hitting around about an eight for me. Bigger air hole in there, you're looking like ten, because we've seen the way this fires. It hits hard. It does. You can see it. I mean, you can see when the power gets to it. It does. It really does hit. Uh, it would if I was making a connection. <laughs> this is the other thing we was talking about. Oh, he's probably gonna have a quick little tinker, but I don't think he's gonna get that on again. Probably without being safe. But um, yeah, it's, it's an eight at the moment with a bigger hole. It's gonna be like ten because the amount of vapor off there is gonna be. Epic with a good fire. Um, flavour of this at the moment, because of the smaller air hole, you probably are getting a little bit more flavour of this. It is actually quite intense. It's actually very, very good at the uh, air hole, which is probably what it's intended for. So for the people that are not looking for the amounts of vapour, but for the flavour, it's perfect. It's, it's, it's up there. It's, it's tennis. You get all of that flavour through there, especially on a cotton wick. Uh, if, if you look into your rebuildable devices, which I, I hope you are. It really does deliver. Um, you, you, you know what kind of materials you'll you prefer, you either prefer silica, eco wall, mesh, or whatever. So you, we we it with that, whichever you prefer. Um, so yeah, the flavour is just going to depend on your material. You are going to get more of cotton, we found. But some people prefer the, the more flavour you get off of uh, mesh and that. But it's both of them are still substantially more than your eco wall and your silica. It is what it is. Uh, so flavour, with the small air air hole, as it is now, it's a 10, it just is, the flavour of it is immense. Uh, with the bigger air hole it is going to dip down, but if you like us, you want a bit more vapour, you're willing to suffer a little bit of flavour loss, but we just pump up our juices with a bit more flavouring. Um, <clears throat> flavour and vapour, vapour at the minute is about an 8. Um, it's not that we're chasing vapour, we're not. At the end of the day, frog in the throat, at the end of the day, flavour is more important than vapour. Um, but, to be honest with you, flavouring this for me is only a 9. It's not, but it, it's good, it is good. It would not suffer if you drilled it out slightly and made it so. It's not even that we're getting low vapour that I want a bigger air hole, it's that it's comfortable to use. I mean, I'm having to. My, my cheeks are going in, that's how hard I'm having to, to, to pull on it to get a decent hit. Um, but a slightly bigger air hole, and I don't think you're going to lose any flavour. I've got to say, in terms of flavour, there are better performing atties. There are. There are. We use better performing atties on a daily. Um, but this is 22mm, you have got a big chamber, and you have got a lot of juice retention, you've got a lot of potential for builds. Um, so, flavour's getting a 9 and vapor's getting an 8. I'm going to drill this, I am, and I don't think flavour's going to suffer at all, uh, and I think it will be a much more comfortable way to use, and then I'll be I'll be happier with it. But as it is, they are both good. They are both good. Um, overall, there's kind of two sides to this. I mean, if you're a tinkerer, and you don't mind sorting out the problems with the uh, setup post issue, you're probably going to quite like this dripper. It is a very good performing dripper when you got it going. It's it's up there. It's it's, it's hitting like overall of about eight and a half, nine. Very good dripper. If you're not willing to put the work into this dripper, and you are going to have to put work into this and tinker with it, four, four. Just because that flavour is still good and the vapour is okay, it is still a four. But you've got to put effort into this one. It's not going to be one you just slap bang in a coil and you're ready to rock and roll. Don't start with this one. If you're tinkering, 
yes, you will probably love this. Depending on your look preference more than anything, because I tend to go for looks, I wouldn't buy this, but up to you entirely. So, yeah, if you're a tinkerer, definitely I would recommend this one. Uh, but you are going to have to tinker with this quite a bit. If you're not a tinkerer, don't. There are just as good out my, uh, rebuildable drip atomizers out there for about the same price. If you're looking at this sort of price range, they're going to give you less hassle. You can just slap hang in a coil and you're good to go. Um, for me, if you're someone who's like well, so someone who's experienced, this does deliver on flavour. It does deliver on vapour, um, and the flavour is nice. It is it is a very nice take on the flavour in this atomizer. It brings out certain sort of notes that you don't necessarily hit in smaller chamber daddies. Um, so the appeal is there definitely. The flavour um, and overall, based on a, um, an experienced user. I don't care, it's still a zero. I don't care. I really don't care how experienced you are. For me, it's dangerous. It is. Um, I'm not a novice user, okay? And I managed to pop a battery on this. I'm not saying that I'm the most experienced, because I'm not. I'm not claiming to be. But if there's potential there, I mean, there's always potential there for shorts and stuff. But if there's potential there for short at a design level, then, then something needs changing, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's it's not that this is super expensive, about 30, 35 quid delivered, it's not super expensive, but it ain't cheap either. It's not, I mean, in IGO L's, what you pick an IGO out for a tenner, um, an IGO W, IGO F, you can pick all these up for less than this money, um, and these don't have any of the problems that this device has. Yes, they, they're not fitting the same requirement, they're not 22 mil drippers. Um, the whole moving this to change the cool stuff, get rid of it, get, just get that gone. Let's just give, give us a, a decent solid post. I would. It would be nice to see. Um, it would be nice to see something with a, a decent amount of slits or a couple of holes, as opposed to one hole with a long screw that you could leave out slightly. So a long post in the middle and two holes, and that way, if you wanted to, you could have it set high on the negative standard, and you've got middle and high on the positive, and you could set it up vertically with mesh if that's what you choose to do, or vertically with silica, as opposed to just horizontally. Um, I'm not, that that I would love to see. Um, but a post that moves to give you 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohm difference at best, potentially risking shortening in the body, and that combined with a poorly insulated 510, it's just, I'm sorry, that's, um, I don't think it's acceptable. If, if you want to buy this, knowing this, then please go ahead. I don't think you're going to dislike it's it. It's definitely a tinkerer's mod. It is, it is, yeah, but there's tinkering, and then there's something that's just not designed right. Um, and it's, it's not designed right, in my opinion. It's, it needs it needs work. If you're willing to bite and put the work in, just because you want, you like the look, you want a 22 mil um, dripper, you like the sound of the air hole being tight and the flavour being good, and you're getting different sort of notes from the flavour, then by all means, go crack on. It's your money. I mean, we're not saying don't buy this. If you want to buy it, it's your money. But these are just our personal takes on this. The this is this is what my opinion is, and I, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't recommend this at all. By far, the worst bit of. Um, Atomizing kit or vaporizing kit I come across in terms of design. It's it's not it's it's downright dangerous. I do um, have to agree. But I, I I still think that if you are a heavy tinkerer, oh like you'll enjoy that, it. You'll enjoy yes. it. If nothing else, you'll enjoy the challenge. Mm. But ultimately you shouldn't have to. No, but any, for everyone else out there, it is a low mark and you just don't don't go here. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put my money here. Um knowing this. Have it I want literally as soon as I got it, I went, what the hell? Um, a bit of a weird setup and everything else. I had a little look and I thought, oh, it actually looks like it could be semi interesting. It wasn't until I started looking and thinking that positive is dangerously close. It is dangerous. Bear in mind, I tightened when I got it, I, that it wasn't fully tightened. I got um, the flies on there and I got it as factory send it, okay, as Vapor Freak send it. I got the flies on there, really tightened it up, and then it was holding itself. It was leaning slightly. So that, that increases even more. I mean, even now, on the camera, I said to you, I, I've got to stick a bit of cotton in there just to make sure it forces it over, just because I don't feel like I've got trust in this device to do it itself. And if a device makes you think, I don't trust this enough to keep itself from shorting at, at a level where you really can't do anything about it, it's not something that we can recommend at all in any way, shape, or form. No, no I know there's going to be people that disagree with us. I know that this is one of Mark's favourite drippers. I do. But I know that Mark's a big tinkerer. Hopefully, Mark, if you watch this, you get what we're saying. Um, if you don't watch it, then you're not going to hear what we're saying. And if you watch it and disagree with what we're saying, then please feel free to leave the comments. It's up to you. It's, 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 it's your money at the end of the day. We're just giving you our thoughts and opinions. That's what you come here for, hopefully. Indeed. If you like them or not, it's up to you, right? We don't, we don't really care. We're giving our thoughts. 
you either like them or you don't. That's Take it. them or leave them. That's it. It's kind of a sad day because I really wanted to enjoy this and I am going to. I am going to. I've said to show. Mod this. I said to show I'm going to mod this. I'm going to change the installation in the 510. I may come up with a new post system if possible. I might try something with um, like machine screw and two washers that you can move up and down to adjust the level of your uh, positive coil. That'd be quite interesting. Um, and I've said to show if you want it back after I've modified it, I'm quite happily send it to you. Um, obviously, I'll keep sending the loop as to what I do to this because if she wants it back, I really do want to send it back to her. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of us wrapping up. Sorry if it's been a bit of a negative one on you guys. It's not something we'd recommend. There are other other things out there. I know 22 mil mods are sparse, should we say? But I wouldn't use that as a reason to buy something that realistically I wouldn't be selling if I was the vendor. Um, there you go, guys. I've been Mr. Proton. This has been the one. See you soon. soon.